Welcome back to Hydro Haven. Today I'm addressing one of the most common questions I receive from viewers just starting their gardening journey. What should I add to my soil to get the best results? I remember standing in the garden center as a beginner, completely overwhelmed by the wall of soil products, each promising garden miracles. After years of experimentation, success, and yes, plenty of failures, I've narrowed down the five most effective soil amendments that give the biggest return on investment for beginner gardeners. These aren't just theoretical recommendations, these are the amendments I personally use season after season because they consistently deliver results. Let's dig into the foundation of gardening success building better soil. Compost, the ultimate all-purpose soil amendment. If I could recommend only one soil amendment to beginning gardeners, it would unquestionably be compost. Nothing else comes close to providing the comprehensive benefits of well-made compost. When I first started gardening, my heavy clay soil would form rock-hard clumps during dry spells and turn into a sticky waterlogged mess after rain. Adding a generous layer of compost transformed that troublesome clay into productive garden soil within just two growing seasons. Compost improves soil in multiple ways simultaneously. It enhances soil structure, allowing clay soils to drain better while helping sandy soils retain more moisture. It introduces beneficial microorganisms that create the soil food web necessary for nutrient cycling. Compost also provides a balanced supply of macro and micronutrients that release slowly as plants need them, reducing the risk of fertilizer burn that beginners often encounter with synthetic options. For new garden beds, I incorporate 2 to 3 inches of compost into the top 6 to 8 inches of soil. For established beds, I apply a 1 inch layer each spring before planting. You have two excellent options for acquiring compost. Make your own, which I highly recommend for sustainability and quality control, or purchase from a reputable local supplier. If buying compost, look for a product that's fully mature, has an earthy smell rather than an ammonia or rotten odor, and has a dark, crumbly texture. A quick tip from my own experience, municipal compost facilities often offer high-quality compost at a fraction of the cost of bagged products from garden centers. One cubic yard of bulk compost typically costs what you'd pay for just a few bags of the pre-packaged variety, and the quality is often superior. The second amendment that has dramatically improved my garden's productivity is worm castings. Often called black gold by experienced gardeners, worm castings are simply the digestive byproduct of earthworms. What makes them extraordinary is their concentrated biological activity and plant growth hormones that you won't find in other amendments. When I first introduced worm castings to my tomato beds, the difference was remarkable. Plants developed stronger root systems, demonstrated better resistance to disease, and produced noticeably more fruit compared to my control plants. Scientific research backs up my observations, showing that worm castings suppress certain pathogens, improve germination rates, and enhance overall plant vigor. Unlike some amendments that require months to break down, worm castings work immediately upon application. I use them in three ways, mixed into potting soil at about 10% by volume, as a thin top dressing around existing plants, and steeped in water to make a biologically active compost tea for foliar feeding. While worm castings are more expensive than bulk compost, a little goes a long way. Even a modest application of one quarter cup around each transplant can make a significant difference in plant performance. For budget-conscious gardeners, establishing a small worm bin using red wigglers allows you to produce your own castings using kitchen scraps, creating a sustainable supply of this premium amendment. The third amendment I wish I discovered sooner as a beginner is leaf mold, partially decomposed autumn leaves that transform into a superb soil conditioner. When I learned that municipalities spend millions collecting and disposing of leaves that could become premium garden amendments, I started gathering bags from curbs throughout my neighborhood in fall. Leaf mold is primarily a soil conditioner rather than a fertilizer. Its sponge-like structure can hold up to 500% of its weight in water, creating ideal conditions for root development and microbial activity. In my garden, beds amended with leaf mold require significantly less frequent watering during summer heat waves and show improved resistance to drought stress. Creating leaf mold is delightfully simple. Collect fallen leaves, shred them if possible, though this isn't strictly necessary, and pile them in a corner of your yard or in a simple wire enclosure. Keep them moist, and within 6 to 12 months, you'll have a dark, sweet-smelling, crumbly material that works wonders in your garden. I incorporate it into planting holes for moisture-loving plants and use it as a mulch around woodland perennials like hostas and ferns. For impatient gardeners, 
you can accelerate the decomposition process by adding a nitrogen source like grass clippings, coffee grounds, or a small amount of blood meal to your leaf pile. This helps microorganisms break down the carbon-rich leaves more quickly. With this approach, I've produced usable leaf mold in as little as three months. The fourth amendment that has made a significant difference in my garden's performance, particularly in poor or sandy soils, is biochar. This highly porous, charcoal-like substance has been used for thousands of years, dating back to the ancient Amazonian terra preta soils that remain fertile centuries after creation. When I first heard about biochar I was skeptical of the dramatic claims, however after incorporating it into my sandy raised beds, I observed improved water retention, reduced nutrient leaching and enhanced microbial activity. The science behind biochar is fascinating. Its honeycomb structure provides a protective habitat for beneficial microorganisms while absorbing and slowly releasing nutrients that would otherwise wash away. The key to success with biochar is proper preparation. Raw biochar can actually temporarily reduce plant growth if applied directly. I charge my biochar before application by soaking it in compost tea, liquid fish fertilizer or even diluted urine, a traditional method for at least two weeks. This fills the microscopic pores with nutrients and beneficial microbes before application. For beginning gardeners, I recommend incorporating charged biochar at approximately 5-10% to by volume when preparing new beds or containers. Biochar is a one-time application that continues benefiting your soil for decades, potentially centuries, making it an excellent long-term investment for your garden. The fifth amendment that earns a permanent place in my gardening toolkit is alfalfa meal. Originally used primarily by organic farmers, this amendment derived from dried alfalfa plants provides a balanced NPK ratio of roughly 3-1-2, along with numerous micronutrients. What makes alfalfa meal truly special, however, is its high concentration of triacontinol, a natural growth stimulant that enhances photosynthesis and plant vigor. I first tried alfalfa meal after noticing my vegetables seemed to plateau in growth mid-season despite adequate fertilization. Adding alfalfa meal as a mid-season boost resulted in a visible growth surge within days. Now I incorporate it into my spring bed preparation routine and use it as a maintenance feeding for heavy feeders like tomatoes and corn. Alfalfa meal works relatively quickly compared to other organic amendments, with nutrients becoming available within 2-3 to three weeks of application. It also stimulates beneficial microorganisms, enhancing the soil's natural fertility cycle. I apply it at a rate of approximately 2 to 3 pounds per 100 square feet when preparing beds, or as a side dressing at half a cup per plant for established vegetables that need a boost. For gardeners who raise rabbits or know someone who does, rabbit manure mixed with alfalfa bedding makes an excellent substitute that combines the benefits of manure and alfalfa in one amendment. This has become a favorite in my garden since I started keeping rabbits specifically for their garden-ready manure. While each of these five amendments performs well individually, their real power emerges when used as part of an integrated soil improvement strategy. My standard bed preparation includes compost as the foundation, worm castings around transplant roots, biochar for long-term structure improvement, alfalfa meal for early season fertility, and leaf mold as a moisture retentive mulch. This combination addresses soil structure, biological activity, immediate fertility, and long-term nutrient cycling creating garden soil that improves year after year with minimal additional input. For beginning gardeners, even incorporating just two or three of these amendments will significantly improve your results compared to using synthetic fertilizers alone. Remember that building soil is a marathon, not a sprint. Each season of thoughtful amendments builds upon the last, creating increasingly resilient, fertile ground that requires less intervention to produce abundant harvests. The amendments I've shared today are investments in your garden's future productivity, If you found this guide helpful, please support the Hydrohaven channel by subscribing, hitting that notification bell, and sharing this video with fellow gardeners. Drop a comment below sharing your own experiences with soil amendments or questions about implementing these recommendations in your specific garden situation. Until next time, remember that great gardens start from the ground up. Happy growing!